Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, You're Not Listening, by Kate Murphy. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. You're Not Listening, 2020, casts a spotlight on the undervalued skill of listening. It's filled with examples of talented professional listeners, as well as practical advice for getting more out of conversations with others, not by saying more yourself, but by listening more closely to others. Key idea number one, listening is unusual today. Listening is discouraged today. We're encouraged to broadcast. We practice public speaking, regularly post on social media, and converse on our phones. When did you last feel heard? When did you last actually listen to someone? As the population ages and younger people retreat to their phones and computers, we're suffering an epidemic of loneliness despite being more connected than ever. People feel alone despite improved communication. They're not getting the attention they want. Microsoft found that the average attention span has dropped from 12 seconds to 8 since 2000. That's below a goldfish's 9 second attention span. Why? Our phones and other gadgets contribute. Distractions are everywhere, even in shop and cafe music. Thus, listening to others is special. Good dialogue may overcome background noise. The things you learn will astound you. The author thinks asking the correct questions makes everyone interesting. But how? The author interviewed world-class listeners to discover out. Key idea number two, even with big data, listening can reveal people's desires. Therapists and military interrogators must listen. The author is a journalist who must know how to get the most interesting answers from her subjects. Naomi Henderson impressed her. Focus group legend Naomi goes by. She advised Bill Clinton to drop his southern accent during his presidential campaign. She moderated 6,000 focus groups with over 50,000 people. Naomi is easy to talk to. She never crosses her arms or legs, is peaceful, and always has time for you. She looks interested. These traits have made focus group participants want to share their insights with her, which has helped her guide numerous clients to what their customers desire. Huge data has replaced qualitative research like focus groups, which has been big business since the 1940s. Quantitative research is powerful, but it can only solve certain questions. There's no space for why or how. Princeton University sociology professor Matthew Solganic likened using a data set to an intoxicated person looking for his keys under a light. Naomi's method can find keys even if they're hidden. She helped create Swiffer, a mop-like cleaner. She noticed that many cleaners wipe the floor using lightly used paper towels through open-ended dialogue. That question would never be asked in a survey, but it led to the creation of a disposable cloth that mimicked paper towels. Key idea number three, good listeners are curious about others and say just enough to demonstrate they comprehend. Curious people make great listeners. Former intelligence officer, ex-FBI lead hostage negotiator Gary Nesner. Nesner has an odd hotel habit. He picks someone at the bar and talks. Nesner wants to know everything about them, not because they're under investigation but because he's naturally curious. Nesner heard about tightrope walking from a salesman. His curiosity allowed him to communicate with terrorists and criminals in crisis situations. Like Naomi the focus group specialist, he's instantly likable since he's focused on others. He receives messages. Another naturally interested ex-intelligence agent works similarly. After 9-11, CIA chief interrogator Barry McManus got a Pakistani nuclear scientist to admit to knowing Osama bin Laden. He merely listened to the scientist. He started chatting to McManus about African Americans in the US, showing his remarkable knowledge of American history. After that, the scientist felt comfortable telling McManus about bin Laden. That example shows that listening successfully doesn't require much talking. Simply following the discourse is key. Effective interpretation goes beyond nodding or repeating the speaker. A friend lost his job. He's upset, but what's bothering him most? It might be money or telling his family. Instead of saying sorry to hear that, focus on what's bothering him and urge him to talk. He'll likely speak more then. Key idea number four, don't think you understand someone especially your loved ones. Who do you trust more, a stranger or a friend? Many like talking to strangers. Psychotherapist Judith Koche specializes on closeness communication bias. She specializes in couples group therapy, when multiple couples meet for extended, regular sessions to discuss their relationships. The whole group listens when someone complains. Listening affects the dialogue. Hearing Koche's couples makes so many advances. The group can point out a partner not listening. Koche describes the moment a mansplainer finally listened to his wife and she cried. Close relationships can lead to complacency and the false idea that we know what our partner thinks and feels. However, experiences change people, thus the past doesn't predict the future. How do you remember your partner? Staying curious and listening without presuming you know what they'll say. 
assumptions can undermine even stranger to stranger conversations. Gender, racial, and occupation stereotypes are horrible. For instance, our expectations of Texans' behavior affect how we listen to them. We only hear what confirms our beliefs. People are more complicated than that. The author advises against identifying as a gay person or millennial. That group is different. Everyone has unique life experiences. Thus, we should never presume we know what others will say. We should accept that they may have completely different views. We must also acknowledge those opinions as valid. That's hard, as we'll see next blink. Key idea number five, listening to opposing perspectives is hard yet necessary. A 2016 USC neuroscience study found something amazing. It scanned the minds of political zealots while questioning them. Brain scans resembled running from a bear. Despite appearances, listening to different views is hard. Duke University professor Ahmad Hariri says that while humans live in relative safety, bear chases are infrequent, our main concerns are social. Thus, the amygdala, which activates when we feel threatened, can overreact to disagreements. We should overcome this propensity. John Keats' 1817 phrase negative capacity is evocative. In a letter, Keats advised staying uncertain and skeptical to succeed. Good listeners need cognitive complexity. Accepting gray regions and opposing viewpoints without mentally fleeing helps you understand others and make more sophisticated decisions. You don't have to agree with others. You won't even comprehend them. Misunderstandings are normal and beneficial in excellent conversations. However, individuals are afraid to remark, I don't understand. Moving on and hoping it doesn't matter is typically easier. Clarifying a misunderstanding can help you understand others. We can't know what others are thinking, therefore they'll sometimes say things that don't make sense. That's excellent because we can learn more about them. We all see the world differently. If we know ourselves, we'll see how our views influence how we see others. Accept it, and you'll see disagreements as chances to listen more and grow. Key idea number six, good questioning helps listening. A good listener usually says less than the other person. The listener's words must be precise. Boston College sociologist Charles Derber describes two conversational responses, support and shift. Someone says her dog got gone for several days. Answering by saying your dog never escapes shifts the focus to you. However, expressing sorrow and then asking a question like where she found her dog may urge the speaker to elaborate. As expected, shift responses are more common, but good listeners are support response experts. Support answers are tricky because they should encourage the speaker to express her own opinion rather than impose yours. Avoid worrying about seeming knowledgeable. Some are so worried about this that they ask leading inquiries. I don't you think that? Query is a shift answer disguised as support. Shift responses can be selfless. They might also come from sincere wish to help. Support replies are difficult since you have to admit you can't fix the other person's difficulties. Nobody, a good listener is more like a sounding board, knowing they can only help the speaker realize things. Christian Quakers have clearness committees for diligent listening. A clearness committee will ask someone well-chosen questions to help them solve a problem, a large-scale support response. In the 1970s, a clearness committee advised Quaker Parker Palmer on accepting a prestigious yet hard job. They questioned what he liked about the job and calmly repeated the question when he answered negatively. Palmer recognized he wanted the job for prestige after listening closely. Palmer founded the Charity Center for Courage and Renewal to spread clearness committee techniques. Listening instruction can take a lifetime. Key idea number seven, listening implies giving up control and silencing your inner voice. Many people like to lead a conversation. In a bad comedic improvisation session, people compete for the spotlight and the funniest retort, which is unsettling. True improv requires listening abilities. Improv helps you focus. Matt Hovde, artistic director of Chicago's Second City, trains newbies. They play group storytelling. Hovde chooses who recounts a narrative and when. It makes everyone listen so they can follow the topic if called on. If you haven't been listening or are so desperate for a chuckle that you ruin the story, it's obvious. Improv is used by increasing firms to develop listening skills because inappropriate comments can interrupt business meetings. We compete for attention in groups and individually. Overactive inner voices might distract us in one-on-one -on -one conversations. When we return to the speaker, we may have missed everything. Even if we're still on topic, we can become concerned with what to say next, not just improv class participants seek snappy comebacks. Fighting this temptation will help you hear more of the speaker and respond better. Accept silence. Westerners avoid it bizarrely. American business people routinely talk themselves into disastrous deals in Asia to avoid awkward silences. Is a pause awkward? It shows you're considering what someone said. A harder question, could you spend a day without talking? Canadian composer R. Murray Schaefer occasionally invites his pupils to try this. They become more aware of the enormous variety of noises around us by the end. Don't fear silence. 
and try turning off your inner voice occasionally. Key idea number eight, listening is hard, but it's worth it. Remember that you must listen to yourself as well as others. Speakers must read their audiences, what excites and bores them. If the individual you're talking to is preoccupied or uninterested, you'll struggle to communicate your amazing story. You must be alert to verbal and nonverbal signs to read listeners. If it fails, ask if they understand. Don't expect constant attention. Nobody can listen constantly. Since it's a physically hard activity, we should be considerate. ATCs work short shifts. Concentration lapses would make them dangerous after two hours. How do you listen when you're exhausted? Take a break politely. Though rare, everyone knows when they're being listened to. Consider why you're tired. Some people are hard to listen to. Consider why. Are they monotonous? Disagree? Do you fear intimacy with them? Consider whether your reasons reflect them or you. Ironically, to be a good listener, you must know yourself well, your biases, habits, restrictions, and what you really want from the talk. Good listening isn't selfish. False. However, good listening benefits the speaker and the listener. Nowadays, few people listen carefully. Whether you're a focus group moderator, government official, therapist, lover, or friend, listening has significant rewards. By being curious, avoiding making assumptions, and asking helpful questions, you can enhance your listening skills for yourself and others. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.